Hello, my name is N. Scott Robinson. I'm the chair of the music department at San Diego Mesa College and welcome to our fall music department showcase. Um, this concert is a virtual concert that shows what some of our ensembles have been doing this semester. While we're remote and keeping everyone safe, we are still making music and moving forward in all of our students' educations. So we are going to feature uh, Ian Bassett with the guitar ensemble, uh, Amy Mine with the choir, and Ian Tordella with the jazz ensemble. Thanks for watching, and each of those directors will tell you a little bit about what they're doing, followed by the ILT for music, Alan Goodman, without whom none of this would be technologically possible. So thanks for tuning in and keep watching as we'll have uh, free concerts every Wednesday as well and an end of the semester uh, full concert as well. Good evening and thank you so much for joining the San Diego Mesa College Guitar Ensemble for our first performance this semester. Now I think we can all agree that this semester has been a little bit different than previous semesters. So let me explain real quick how we approached this semester and rose to the challenge of not being able to get together while maintaining a guitar ensemble. This semester, one of the unique challenges we had was actually being able to put together pieces while not being in the same room. But technology has advanced to the point where we can definitely make that happen. Using a website called bandlab.com, I had all the students log in, create accounts to this free music editing software site. This site encourages collaboration as well as giving the students the ability to edit their tracks. I created different ensemble groups for different students and had them all create tracks on BandLab. From there, they could go in, once they'd learned their track, record their track, and then start actually getting to the point where they could rehearse along with the perfect track that they would record, sometimes taking multiple takes. Our job was not done though. Students had to synchronize video with audio in order for us to make an acceptable performance. This involved using things such as reverb, EQ, compression, all to simulate the sound of a guitar inside of a live space. Once students were able to create a decent audio sound, we then had to synchronize video with it. So students would film themselves. After they filmed themselves playing and creating another audio track, they had to synchronize separate audio to their video. From there, I would take their fully completed ensemble tracks and their video that they created and synchronize the audio so we could create a better sounding, more polished video experience. We had a whole range of equipment that we were dealing with. Anything from home studio equipment to a single microphone all the way down to earbuds that's plugged into your phone in order to get a more isolated sound of your guitar playing. So we have a range of different qualities, but each student was able to prepare something better than just pulling off audio and video from their cell phone. So to the students of Guitar Ensemble, Great job so far, and I can't wait to see where this process takes us by the end of the semester. If you're interested in Guitar Ensemble, feel free to email me, listed right about there. And you can always check out our Ensembles page to see what we are offering for next semester. Again, if you are interested, contact me or anyone in the department, and we'll set you up. Thank you once again, and I give you the San Diego Mesa College Guitar Ensemble. Enjoy.
Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to our Mesa College Virtual Music Department Showcase. My name is Amy Mine, and I have the privilege of directing the Mesa College Virtual Choir. We meet synchronously twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2.20 to 3.45 p.m. As we all know, most colleges in the area are meeting exclusively online due to obvious reasons. And on top of that, ensemble musicians everywhere are grounded as concerts and productions are canceled or postponed at best. In light of all this, I feel extremely lucky that we are able to find some creative ways to keep our musical community alive and our skills sharp through the magic of Zoom and a few other programs that we're using for the first time. In fact, I firmly believe that we have the potential to bridge this gap until we can meet again and come up even stronger as musicians. So since we are unable to meet in person to vocalize, rehearse, perform, or even socialize, we've come up with a variety of activities intended to continue building our skills as musicians, exploring our creativity, and keeping our community alive through socialization and emotional support when needed. To give you a picture of what we've been doing in choir these days, I'd like to tell you a bit about our daily activities and some of our larger musical projects. On a daily basis, when we meet, we do the following. We first check in with each other and spend a little time socializing, sometimes venting, sometimes consoling, sometimes focusing on the bright side, whatever we need that day. Uh, we do spend some time on warm-ups and vocalises for voice technique. Uh, this was led by me at first and still periodically, but now each singer is taking a turn leading warm-ups for at least one day. This begins with some body work in the form of stretches, yoga, some brief meditation, and breathing work. And next we progress into some vocalizations through simple patterns or complicated tongue twisters. Uh, we do spend some, some time sight reading on most days, uh, building our music reading skills and our ear training skills. We take turns on muting ourselves on Zoom to test ourselves out on short sight reading excerpts. Um, and then we've also incorporated a singer spotlight activity on most days where each student has signed up for a day to use 10 to 15 minutes to share or to teach something to the group that they are passionate about. This can be music related or just a chance to share non-musical hobbies or skills with one another. And then of course we have our repertoire work, uh, the songs that we are learning on, learning as a group. So how we do this on Zoom is that I teach the individual parts one at a time while everyone else is muted. I encourage them to sing along to their own part, but then while I'm teaching or playing uh, the other parts, I encourage them to practice their music reading by either learning and singing along with those other parts that aren't theirs, or to test themselves by singing along uh, their part with the other parts that I'm singing or playing. This really builds our skills as independent musicians. And then we utilize the breakout rooms in Zoom to go off into sectionals. So for each section, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, there are one to two section leaders uh, who take the lead during sectionals via those Zoom breakout rooms. Uh, the section leaders model the voice part, they offer help to their fellow singers, and they also uh, test each other individually as recording due dates approach. And then we're also doing some group projects this semester. So we also take some time in our daily rehearsals um, as needed to break out into our small groups for those projects, depending on their project of choice. So they have some time to work with one another, depending on uh, what their project is. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so uh, in addition to this, I also want to tell you some of the ongoing tools that we're using this semester now that we are online. We are, of course, using Zoom to meet uh, synchronously for class. Um, but we are all also using a program called Soundtrap. I believe there's other uh, ensemble leaders that are using this as well. What I love the most about Soundtrap is that we're able to lay down tracks one at a time, building our piece uh, uh, bit by bit. But also what I love about this is that uh, as a singer, you can go in and record your part while listening to all the other tracks that have been laid down before you, which gives you the impression of singing together in real time with the voices that are in our group, as opposed to singing along with some other track or just in silence. So this is a really wonderful tool for us because we long to sing with one another. Um, and then a new program that was just released this year that I know I will continue to use in the future is called My Choral Coach. 
Now, this is a program where I upload uh, the music content of what we're working on together. It allows them to practice with their part, but uh, what's really cool is that they can go in and record their part and submit, and the program shoots them back immediate feedback and shows them uh, uh, on a graph where exactly they're accurate or inaccurate, and if they're inaccurate, what it is, if it's pitch, rhythm, or timing. So that's a really useful tool for them and for me to see how they're doing. All right, so um, speaking of Soundtrap, I would like to show you a short video from our first collaborative project, which is an experimental improv rendition of the round Dona Nobis Pachem. Uh, after learning this short, simple round and laying down the foundation that I sang myself, I later muted my part and invited the students to lay down their own tracks of the round and include at least one experimental component, either harmonizing or playing around with the program for sound effects. So here is an example of what they came up with. So this is our experimental Dona Nobis Pachem. Next, I'd like to share with you our first virtual choir project of the semester, which is an arrangement of Pachelbel's Canon in D by Peter Liebigen titled Pachelbel's Canon of Peace, which contains a lovely flute solo by the wonderful and talented Pam Marcha and piano accompaniment by Saki. All of our virtual choir projects this semester we could not have done without the hard work and talents of our editing team, Alan Goodman, Fernanda Baltadano, and Saki. Thank you, team. The words in this song, Dona Nobis Pachem, translate to grant us peace. So when I asked the students if they'd like to portray a theme in our video, a decision was reached, peaceful bedtime during quarantine. We hope you enjoy.
But before we move on to our second virtual choir presentation, I'd like to give you a bit of an idea of what our virtual choir recording process consists of. What we do is we make a guide video for the students that consists of three parts. In one corner of the screen is a video of me conducting. In another corner of the screen is a video of Saki playing the piano. And then in a large portion of the screen is a screenshot of each singer's individual voice part. What we learned after a bit of trial and error is that the editing process is vastly easier with a coordinated clap in the beginning and at the end of each recording. Then the students individually record their part. Now this can be quite challenging for choral singers who are used to being surrounded by other singers and relying on them for tuning and overall collaboration. I've done it myself on a couple other virtual choir projects and I can say there's a potential for you to feel very exposed. Additionally, each student needs to ensure that the lighting is optimal, background noises are absent, and recording technology is totally functional. All things that choral singers are never responsible for. So needless to say, this is totally different, but a fascinating experience. I do feel that this has the potential to encourage greater musical strength and independence in our students this semester. So for our second virtual choir piece, we'd like to present a choral arrangement of Rafe Vaughn Williams' beautiful famous song, Lyndon Lee, set to poetry by William Barnes. This is an a cappella piece about the beauty and nostalgia of nature. So naturally, the choir selected a theme of greenery and flowers to help capture the mood of this beautiful poetic setting. Please enjoy our performance of Lyndon Lee. Lastly, I would like to share with you a brief glimpse at what the Mesa College virtual choir singers have been up to this semester to keep singing, researching, listening, and exploring music independently and together. In addition to our virtual choir projects that you've seen so far, we're also engaging in some independent projects as well as some small group projects based on individual interests. Uh, these individual projects, which I won't get to sharing with you all today, um, have included a variety, including a playlist of women composer songs by Liz, 
a six-hand piano performance of Handel's Alleluia Chorus by Anna and Friends, a half-hour show choir set by Layla, a future recital program by Luke, vocal performances by Kylie Kiel, Joey, Stephanie, and Tara, a research project on the effect of music and singing on the brain by Luca, explorations in harmonizing and arranging by Alyssa, Juwan, and Tyler, and another great original composition by Sana. I wish I could show them all, but of course we won't in the interest of time and copyright. Additionally, all singers have learned and submitted a recording of themselves singing a solo Italian aria for use in future vocal auditions. So, to conclude our concert, I would like to share with you some of the group projects that have been submitted so far by our talented singers. Thank you so much for joining us on our, uh, our presentation today, and hope to see you later this semester on our end of semester concert and in our final choir performance as well. So I hope you enjoy our choir's group projects. Thank you. Good evening, and thanks again for joining us tonight on this virtual concert. My name's Ian Tordella, and I direct the Mesa College Jazz Ensemble. Um, this group has students from beginning level to intermediate level, and every week we meet to play, listen to, and study the music we call jazz, which as Americans is truly one of our cultural treasures. Um, we have the students in this class split up into three smaller combos, 
So tonight we've created two mashup videos in order to feature students from all the different groups we have. Um, the first song you're going to hear is a blues, a jazz blues by the great tenor saxophonist Sonny Rollins, and it's called Tenor Madness. The second tune is a jazz classic by pianist Horace Silver, and it's called Song for My Father. Enjoy. Thank you. 
Hi, my name is Alan Goodman, and I'm the lab tech for the San Diego Mesa College Music Department. Hi, I'm Fernando Balsadano, and I'm the instructional assistant for the music department. And we really enjoyed putting together the showcase concert for you. Please stay tuned. This marks the halfway point of the semester, and we have a lot more planned. We have a lot more in store. Keep an eye on your social media, on your email inbox for more upcoming show announcements. We hope you enjoyed the show tonight. And we look forward to seeing you again virtually throughout the rest of the semester. Hope you have a great rest of your evening. Thanks a lot and have a good night. Bye-bye.